Welcome again to our coach interviews, where you really get to understand the person behind the action coach. And uh, it's an honor for me to welcome Maura Dewey Smith from the middle of South Africa and my home province, the Free State. And it's always nice to connect with the Free Staters, who are some of the best people in the world. So, Maura Dewey's uh, welcome and looking forward to getting to know you a little bit more. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to uh, speak to you guys today. So, Maureen Louise, you, you've got a bit of an, an interesting journey coming into Action Coaching. We can talk about that a little bit more shortly, but maybe just give us a, a, a rundown of who is Maureen Louise? What, what have you done in the past that got you to where you are before you even became an Action Coach? Well, my, um, I actually studied graphic design. I'm a qualified graphic designer. And then I started uh, my journey in the media, specifically newspapers. So I worked for Media24 for a big part of my life. I learned a lot there, especially corporate, um, corporate systems. I think that's why they're called corporate. They've got the systems. And um, I think I learned a lot there. And besides the career in, in kind of media and publishing and things like that, you then also had and still have your own business. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think the big thing is I get bored easily. So even when I walked, uh, when I worked in media, I went through circulation, um, marketing, pre-press. So I did a bit of everything. And there you could actually see the pillars that you need in a business. Mm -hmm. So I've got my own eventing business. Um, well, events aren't um, really, you can't have any events at the moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's where I started out, my own business in eventing. And okay. then I think it was 2017, um, my paths crossed with uh, Diederik van Nika at Kering Blinkfontein. And he was the franchise owner of Action Coach as well as Love for Marketing. So he needed somebody, a driver to do uh, Love for Marketing. Mm -hmm. And then as we went along, I saw that you know, Action Coach is actually something that I could be passionate about. And where I could make a change personally, as well as business wise in, um, especially in my network, within my network. And um, then I qualified myself as an action coach, business coach. And uh, February last year, I um, acquired the, the franchise in Bloemfontein. Diederik said that he did not want to go on with the franchise. And um, that's where it all started. Yeah, so, you know, corporate, your own business, then in collaboration with the coach love for marketing for those of you that don't know is a, it's a kind of digital and social media marketing company uh, and then joined first um, in partnership with a coach that was running a franchise and then went on your own but interestingly if you look at last year that being 2020 the eventing business obviously took a massive knock no doubt because of covid and lockdown but actually your coaching business was only really starting in lockdown too in Boob, that is in the Freistaat in the Bloemfontein, and we gaan amper niks in the Bloemfontein aan as jy met die locals praat nie. So how did you find growing your business, transitioning, stepping up, all of that in a supposedly conservative, non-existent business market like people perceive Bloemfontein to be? I think, first of all, the perception that there's nothing happening in Bloem, there's a lot happening. And it's actually a growing hub in the Free State. But um, I also think it was um, supernatural that um, I could not actually focus just on Action Coach. There was nothing that really took my focus away with all the eventing. And um, I've got a big network in Bloemfontein. And luckily, um, with tried and tested systems through Action Coach, I could um, build my and sustain and also retain my, uh, my clients. And um, while we went into full lockdown, a lot of people said, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. We're going to be swimming and we're going to be braying. And um, that's not what we did. We still had our, um, our coaching sessions, even though it was not in person, it was via Zoom. So we looked at um, sales specifically. We looked at um, building your database. We looked at sales script. We looked at sales training. So um, once that... Um, the economy could open up again, we were ready to just start opening up and uh, do what we're supposed to be doing in the, in the different services, industries, as well as um, 
product industries that I'm coaching. So the biggest thing is that a lot of those companies did better than they did the previous year. That was the one thing. And um, COVID, I actually, we had a growth club last week and I said to them, whenever do we talk about COVID? And they all said never. So it is not really on our RAS, our radar. COVID is not on our radar. We are making plans to, um, to move past that. I think that's a critical part on, of, of the success that you've been able to demonstrate with your clients is that COVID hasn't been an issue. It's been a business and change comes along and we have to be able to adapt and deal with it. But you, you said that many of your clients have haven't had better years than before lockdown. So maybe give us one or maybe two examples of clients and, and what's actually happened in their business despite the interesting year we had with lockdown and COVID. Okay, so one of my clients, it was a group client. Um, she's actually now on to the next group, Mentor Club. She started with our Action Club, uh, is in the salon and beauty industry. So as you know, they for quite, quite a few months, they could do nothing. But with her, what I made sure was that at least every second week or every week, I just called her, just wanted to know how she's doing, um, bounce some ideas and just, um, it was a soundboard for her. And uh, end of last year, she said to me, but how did you just keep so optimistic and um, positive? Mm. I said, well, I was facing you guys. It wasn't like I could go and sit in the corner and cry in front of you. I was also, my heart was also going boom, boom, boom. But um was plans we needed to make plans so even with her she had a mobile service and got if you wanted to um, color your hair she spoke to her supplier and they um they've got pre-mixed kits that they could send to you and you could color your own hair mm -hmm. and um they did very well i'm very proud of her there's a lot of systems that we've put into place during lockdown as well as after and then the other one is a uh, site form light steel construction through tried and tested and hard work. And they just, they like sponges. Um, the three directors that I'm coaching, they, they really like sponges. They just take everything in, make it their own, and then go and work at it. So that's how they got the results. And um, like I said, sales, sales, sales. That's the only sustainable thing that's gonna, that carried us through. And um, that's gonna be carrying us through in 2021 as well. What we're now adding this year is service delivery as well. We have to focus on sales, service delivery. Okay, and a very focused approach. And interestingly, because this is often a question when, when I may be sitting in my business thinking, well, what can a business coach really do for me? Do they really understand my industry? And you just mentioned two very different industries, but obviously you coach across uh, a broad sector. So how do you manage to coach businesses in such a variety of different fields some of which are very much, let's call it the old male dominated, um, hard, brutal kind of industries. You know what? I can coach any business that are willing to, um, to adapt to tried and tested business principles. I do not have to be a specialist because the specialist in the industry is actually the business owner that you're coaching. So that's the way I look at it. Um, I don't think that I really need to know anything about the industry because um, the, the pillars of the business stay the same. We have to look at financial. We have to look at teams. We have to look at marketing. We have to look at sales. Um, and with through Action Coach's five ways and tried and tested systems and methods, you can coach into industry any business owner that are willing to put in the work. Hmm, I think that last part is the critical one. Must be willing to at least put in the work because many of your clients are actually quite well established, good, successful businesses. You're actually just helping them transition to the next level and break through to that next level. Yes, definitely. And also, um, I think my my USP is actually to look at um, doing my, my, my group coaching. I go to established businesses with um, with teams in there. And then I do actually group coaching with the business owner and then with the different managers in the team. So it's a, a 10 month, still a 10 month program and you still only instilling the principles in the business. Mm -hmm. But through that, you also um, gain confidence within the managers and um, 
not just like with, with, with different businesses that you coach in a group coaching. They've got a similar goal that they're pulling towards. So you're getting a lot of results mm. because you're just coaching one business, but in a group format. Yeah, so everybody, both the owner and all the management and the various different departments are all kind of pulling in the same direction towards a unified goal. So the traction is a lot quicker. So you, you touched on it briefly when you spoke about the journey, you know, first meeting Dedrick, joining for the love for marketing side and then saw that you know, here's an opportunity to actually work across the business sector. So why did you become a business coach? What, what gets you up in the morning to do every day what you do? I love to work with people. I've got a big network and um, the thing that gets me up in the morning is I'm always overly optimistic. And um, even now, after a year where I really, through all the action clubs and all the group coaching that I did, you really get to know the content of um, action coach. But I still find myself while I'm coaching that I'm getting goosebumps. Because wow. there's, there's that, every time with a different client, there's that, wow, that BFO. So um, I think that's what keeps me going. And um, the coaching actually invigorates me. Um, last week with my growth club, I saw it again. I get so excited that um, we, sometimes it drains some people because I'm more of an extrovert. It energizes me. So when I get home, I can't stop thinking about all the potential in my clients. Mm. So it's interesting because you, you mentioned the two clients where you've had great results and focused on sales and through COVID done some great things, but, but people run businesses. And as you rightly said, you really like working with people. So what is maybe the standout human transformation, the, the personal development or overcoming something personally that the business coaching has actually helped somebody overcome in their own business? Well, I think once again, if we look at site form, um, the other day they said to me, um, all of a sudden, the three of them really um, get along a lot better. And it's because they started to be more open with, within the coaching, um, within the coaching sessions, um, a lot more open, um, a lot more sharing with personal stuff. So obviously then everybody, they get to be a more close, a closer knit group. The other one is um, Nicola from um, Metsy and Co. So she actually is more the manager, the operational manager, and the business owner actually just said to her, okay, you manage everything. So then we got to a point where we needed to tell the, um, where we needed to have a meeting with the business owner and say, listen, yeah, you never get around to doing anything in the business. Nicola is doing actually everything. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it make sense to give her um, a lot more say in the business? And then we tried that. And from that moment on, as we sat there, I could see Nicola's eyes just went ka -ching, ka -ching, and you know, everything you could see, she's now taking ownership of the business mm -hmm. and on a, on a personal uh, level, you could see that from last year up till now, she's a different person. She's got a lot more confidence. She takes ownership. Um, she knows the business exactly what she wants to do, where she's on her way to, up to a point where she's actually now, um, if she wants to say, listen, yeah, but I want, um, I want she is in the business. Okay. So it's, it's, it's interesting because business is a vehicle or should be a vehicle to serve us as individuals. And you, know, you yourself run a business and apply the very same principles to the clients that you coach. But what do you like doing outside of work? What, other than the business, what, what, what keeps you busy? Or where are your interests? My interests are actually people. I love people. So on weekends, um, in Afrikaans, they say, as you will draw, as you in. So at short notice, if anybody calls, I'm in. I'm, I, I like just socializing with people. Um, I like reading as well. And um, I think that is something also, because now if I read, I don't like to read fiction. So it's always something business, but it helps me to grow. So mm -hmm. I enjoy doing that. So out of that reading, what's, what's maybe some of the best either books you've read or advice that you've got or insight through the, the development that you've done yourself? You know, it's interesting that you're asking that. Um, you'll remember in 2017, Ari Galper actually visited South Africa and he went to our BFA conference. Mm. And I was just at the bottom end of Action Coach and 
you know, everything that he said made sense to me, but I would I wasn't really in a sales position at that stage. So just brushed over. And then over the few over the past years, then um, every now and then his name came up on Monday morning webinars or speaking to at Action Coach conferences as well. And uh, I actually now got the book and I finished it. And it's it really it literally took me an afternoon to read through the book. It's so it's so easy to read. But if you read that about sales, then um, it really some most of us feel like dirty salesmen when we think about sales. And it's 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 grounded in our belief system as well. But when you read what Ari says about how you should be approaching a prospect and how it should be all be about how you can actually assist and help the person, then your whole mindset shifts. And um, yeah, well, since my diets, after I've now read this, um, I had a diet this morning and I, I just changed my focus totally. So I wasn't focused on the sale anymore. I was focused on how I could help this person. And um, I actually found that it made me more me. Okay. It, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't feel as if I'm unnaturally trying to coax somebody to buy a product. Mm. So I would definitely, um, I am going to try and get this book. At this stage, I'm not sure if it's uh, available in hard copy. But um, I'm going to try and get this book for, for all my clients because I think there's a huge learning within mm. within those pages. Yeah, Ari, Ari Galper, for those of you that don't know, focuses on trust-based selling. And it's always interesting to listen to somebody that wasn't in the sales role, now loves sales and actually coaches a lot on that and has helped many clients through that. So it is the approach that you use, not necessarily the sale or the mindset around sales itself. So... People might be listening to this and going, Maria Louise must be a superwoman because she socializes, she reads, she runs her own business. For those of you that don't know, you're a single mom to two beautiful daughters and have been doing homeschooling with all the struggles. So how do you do all of that for everyone around you? You already said it, I'm a superwoman. <laughs> so <laughs> now I think, um, I think you can only, there's, 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 People say that if you want something done, give it to a busy person. But what does that busy person do if you if you do not plan and you do not use your calendar, then you won't get around to doing anything. So um, I'm not homeschooling. Um, I did during lockdown, but luckily um, I, my one child is at um, a homeschooling center. So that takes a lot of the pressure off as well. But literally I have... In the mornings because i drop them off in the morning and i pick them up in the afternoon again so i really need to jam pack my mornings with everything that i need to do and um in the afternoons then i need to go and pick them up and then there's all the stuff that goes around afternoon with children and with activities as well so i need to do everything in the morning and um, the minute you you plan better you can do more because i find that i can really do everything in the morning and it's not as if I'm resting in the afternoon. Being a mother is part of my job, actually. So mm -hmm. I need to put in time for that as well. Okay. You're great advice there. So for entrepreneurs that are sitting running their business and thinking there's more, because I think we get to that stage where we realize there's more, but we just don't know how to get there. What would be your advice to them? What, what, what should they do to take them from where they are to where they want to be? You know what i think especially now it's a good time to get to being on and being an entrepreneur is not just i just wrote matric and now i'm an entrepreneur it's going through the systems and um getting the discipline if you don't have the discipline you're never going to be able to be an entrepreneur um that's the one thing the other thing is you have to check your mindset so if you just look at um at your identity iceberg, you know, my beliefs. My belief system is actually impacted by my environment. So a lot of us, especially middle-aged, has been almost brainwashed to um, find a job and then work at it for 40 years. And then, you know, you, you retire and then you can live off 40% of your earnings. <laughs> um, that just doesn't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, now is really the time to look at your mindset first 
and look at the discipline to get into something. And of course, you need to have to do something that um, that makes the blood flow, something that you're passionate about. Otherwise, I don't think it's really going to work. Hmm. I absolutely agree. You know, it's not it's not for sissies, uh, entrepreneurship, but nothing worth doing properly is going to come easily. And then you put in the efforts. Of course, if you are anywhere in Central South Africa, you best get hold of Mari Louise to partner with you in that journey because entrepreneurship needs to solve all of our challenges. And therefore, the more you grow a better business, uh, the more we all benefit. So uh, Mari Louise can definitely help you and guide you through that. And as she rightly said, many people uh, are even better off now than they were before COVID. And that's purely because an outside perspective, the right systems, the right approach, and the right focus to ensure that you're getting the results in your business. So Mari Louise, uh, it's a pleasure to work with you. Uh, I think your clients are privileged to have you and uh, looking forward to, to many more successful years together. Thank you very much, Harry. I appreciate that.